Welcome to the Celtic Way Morning Briefing Live. It's Friday, July the 1st. Sorry, scrap that. It's just a day. <laughs> That's the day it is. The day every Celtic supporter has been waiting for. Just a day. I'm May Haggerty 10. Tony Haggerty, as you know, and I'm joined today by Sean Martin at Sean Martin TCW. Sean, how are you? I usually forget to ask you that, but how are you today? I'm fine, Tony. I'm absolutely <laughs> fine. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I think I know. We'll go to the one football. Go to the one football. Yes, let, yes. let me collect I'll let myself. Can, let I'll me let you encode your thoughts. Indeed. <laughs> now, guys, as we do the housekeeping every morning, big up our sponsors, the One Football app. If you've not downloaded it, get downloading the One Football app. Links in the description. The One Stop Football Shop for scores, news, lineups, transfer rumors, live streaming, match highlights, and much, much more. You can immerse yourself in the digital football experience and have the best personal experience out there. So big up to One Football. We thank them dearly for their sponsorship. And as you can see, running along the bottom, we've got a new deal for you. If you subscribe to the Celtic Way, you know what to do. Hit the button and you can join three months of Celtic Way content for just three pounds. That's a bargain. That's three months for three pounds. All you have to do: log on to www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe, and there you have it. It's happened, Sean. <laughs> To the naysayers and the doubters and all those who wishful thinkers who thought it wasn't going to happen, Jota is a Celtic player and he signed a five-year deal. What a magnificent piece of business for Celtic. It is, Tony. That, that, that's the only way to put it. It's superb business. It's uh, I, wasn't ne- I wasn't necessarily panicking, as you know. I mentioned about the dates not meaning as much as what people were applying to them, the implicit kind of deadlines we were all putting on it in our head, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't. I, I didn't expect it to be a five-year deal. I think that is a that is an even as an added bonus for Celtic fans to see that part of it. And I realise it's uh, it's it's reported it's a four-year deal, with an option for another one. But nonetheless, a five-year deal. It's it's simply sensational business. Clever people running the club, Sean, and the <laughs> cleverest being the manager. But there you go. Now, I've watched the. No doubt, everyone else has watched the small interview that Jota's yep. given the four and a half minutes on the. Celtic TV channel and the thing that struck me Sean four words I tweeted out I fell in love yeah this is a bona fide Benfica supporter we spoke about it off air he said one on loan season at Celtic what a success but I'll quote Billy McNeil on this there's Mm -hmm. something of the fairy tale about Celtic isn't there and Jota's just been totally encapsulated by it and uh, seduced by it which has made him sign on for another five years he said it himself i fell in love it's like yourself or myself <laughs> going to portugal playing a season for benfica or sporting lisbon or whoever and saying that you've fallen in love with that club it's a remarkable feat and i think every celtic supporter should feel proud of the part that they've played in that making the boy feel at home and giving him a home from home in terms of his football career and i know he's being handsomely rewarded that i'm not i'm not dismissing that but he got a feeling for Celtic, didn't he? Clearly. He did, and you're, you're right to point out the fans should feel proud of that because, yes, all right, it's not as if, it's not as if he's going to be playing for nothing and all of that does come into it, but for him to use that phrase, it is ref, it's referring to the fans, really. It's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. referring, all right, it could be referring to his teammates and stuff and, and all of that, but it is, it's referring to the impact that the fans and, and the club had on him while he was here. Not every club has that impact, and not every loan spell has the impact that Jota yep. had. Yeah, without a doubt. And then just remember, it was a it was a loan spell. I mean, that was that was what it was, and it's now turned into a five year deal. Never in doubt, Sean, was it? Never in doubt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I think every Celtic supporter has just had a good week this week, haven't they? With Alexandro Bernabe coming yep. in, and you know, and the icing on the cake being Jota. But it just shows that, you know, serious statements of intent there, Sean. And Definitely. And Carter Car- Vickers as well, don't forget, which mm-hmm. people had prioritised before Jota. You know, so, I mean, it's just mm-hmm. it's shaping up nicely, isn't it? Let's let's say that. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I mean, we'll come to the ins and outs of Jota in a minute, but in the overarching impact in, in those terms, again, it's, it's that feeling of getting business done early. Yeah. Uh, pre-season's barely underway. They're less than a week in. Uh, to the to pre-season training. International players haven't even returned yet, a lot of them. Um, and Celtic are about, are, they are able to say, 
that they've bagged their two biggest targets, three if you include Dyson Maida on a permanent, even though that yeah. was agreed already, and they've added players in key positions. A couple more in, and then I think the full focus should probably be on getting a few out the door, as I'm maybe seeing a couple of comments suggesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but overall, Tony, a phrase that Ange Postecoglou used last year, you're on your own race and all of that. Yeah. But it is wise occasionally to have a glance around to see what potential rivals are doing. And at this stage in time, I'm sure you'll agree, there's a vast, vast difference in off-season reinforcements. Celtic, even without qualifiers, have got that glint in their eye of getting ready for the Champions League. And it's exciting. Pretty much yeah. all of us who... Pretty much all of us will have worked with a boss who it feels like says no to stuff mm-hmm. constantly. Mm-hmm. Right now, the best thing I can say is Ange Postecoglou is working with a boss in Michael Nicholson who is saying yes. Yes, indeed. Correct. Quite right, Sean. I think, uh, as I alluded to earlier, there's clever people running the club and Ange and Michael Nicholson have clearly got a, a wonderful relationship there as well. What a start to the weekend, absolutely buzzing. Good luck. I think every Celtic report is the same. Sean, as you say, I think there's a phrase for it, Sean, you're talking about looking ahead to the Champions League. Tooling up, I think it's called. I knew you were going to use that phrase. That's why I didn't use it, because I knew you were. Tooling up. Um, it's you know, the same and... as January. It's the yeah. same as January. It's um, not only getting it done early, it's getting it done right. It's getting the right people in. There's obviously a certain aspect of it with Jota where you, you literally do know what you're getting because he's been here for a year. Um, but the, in the same mould that January was tooling up for that title running and to overtake at the top because remember in January it still had to be done yeah. uh, and in that same mould that, that's the way that they're approaching this summer and I genuinely I've said it since the, the season finished but I still think it's very very exciting times Oh without a doubt and I think uh, every Celtic supporter is just uh, they, they want the season to start tomorrow don't they they just, yep. they just, can't, yep. they just can't wait but you know having celebrated the, the arrival of Bernabe and Jota today you now think, who's next? Who else? Because I don't yeah. think Angie's finished. You know, <laughs> more out the doors than anyone well, yeah. indeed. You know, centre back, defensive midfielder. Now I joke to you off air, and I said Vinicius Souza. That's who we want next. Mm. You know, and uh, would that make? Don't be greedy, Tony. Yeah, don't yeah, be yes, greedy. And you should, <laughs> don't be greedy. Uh, that would be the, the perfect uh, transfer window. But you, you, you know, David Bradley, two more would be lovely. What have I always said? Every manager's two players short of a perfect team, aren't they? Nah. That kind of thing. So, two players short. But, you know, you, you got the feeling, Sean, or you get the feeling, sorry, that there is more to come. You know, and David Ferguson, how's he just getting his fixtures and fittings in now? It's looking beautiful. Yeah, it's taking taking shape quicker than Ange probably thought, but mm. it's just all positive stuff, Sean, isn't it? It's been a long time since we've felt like this about uh, Celtic in particular. It is. It's as I say. It's it's not necessarily just the fact that Jota signed, although that that yeah. is enough. That's enough to get excited about. It's just the whole, the sum of the the whole, uh, the sum of the parts. Yeah. Sorry, of yeah. the way that they're going about their business to me. Uh, without a doubt. Now you were saying there about the the ins and outs of Jota. Are you going to give us some ins and outs of Jota? Uh, yeah, I mean a, a lot. A lot of it will already be known. Um, but uh, there, there was obviously reports last night about an international window and all of that stuff. There is no actual, there is no such thing as an international window, really, right? It's the international windows for international fixtures. It's not for transfers, right? But um, I said to you all yesterday about the official um, end of the season and thus the official end of his initial loan deal. That was the kind of significance of the 30th and the first rather than the Portuguese window opening. It wasn't really that. Uh, both Portugal and Scotland's 2022-23 season start today officially. Um but Scotland could obviously register players since June the 10th. I think it's easy to get confused on stuff like that, but those are the facts as FIFA lay it out anyway. Um, but in any case, we understand that the widely reported fee of around six six 6.3 million, um, which is around 7.5 million euros, and the 30% sell-on clause are both correct. That Those have been the figures that have been bandied about for the last few weeks. They, as far as we understand, they are correct, Tony. Yeah. Um, and also, we understand they'll be up there with the highest paid players at the club in terms of salary too. I won't... I won't we won't put a figure on it because this isn't the NBA. It won't be revealed with his signature and, and stuff like that. But we understand it's up there from what we've been told, Tony. Yeah, and uh, what's your thoughts on that, Sean? Are you happy with that or are you just happy that he's here? Mm. I think it's it's only natural. You think of the mm-hmm. season he had. Um, what he might have been on at Benfica is almost irrelevant because yeah. it's, it's, it's um, a different situation entirely. He was a key player for Celtic last year, arguably yeah. the key player, one of. 
So I think it's probably natural that that he's uh, he's um, compensated to that degree with with the status that he'll have in the squad. Uh, as far as we're aware, it doesn't break away structure. Just just to put that out there. Um, but regardless, I mean, in terms of him himself, we know what he brings. His quality shown through last season, both. I would say both in entertainment value and in actual contributions, 13 goals, 14 assists in all competitions. All right, that injury knocked him off his stride for a wee while after he came back, but he ended up playing a pivotal role in that title running, Tony, as well. Yeah. Now, I go back to when I spoke to Davis Caleb Dunn, who played for a Harry Kewell under Oldham, yep. and he singled out Jota. He said, wait till Harry Kewell gets his claws into Jota. He'll make him even better. I just thought that was such a, you know, it stuck to me, you know, just stood out to me. Why yep. you know, why would he pick Jota? And Jota wasn't even a Celtic player at that point. You know, and, and, and I, I thought, wow, that's saying something. And he was talking about the one-to-one time that Harry Kuehl would probably put into Jota. And I said to you, if Jota does sign and Harry Kuehl improves him, what an asset you have in your hands, Sean. Because, as you say, he hit the ground running last year and became a fan's favourite and, and still missed a, a, a lengthy chunk of the season. Aye, I mean it's we've kind of spoke about the, the potential impact Harry Kuehl would have, but it's um, <laughs> it's almost the way that Davis Keller done put it to you, saying that he could improve Jota, he could make, he could take him to another level, and you're going, yeah. what level can he reach then? If that's the case, because <laughs> last season you've got to remember that the, the kind of sporadic appearances he had for Benfica and he'd alone at Real Valladolid and stuff, but last season was his first real proper season yeah. as a Football fully season. fledged yep. main player in a team. And he embraced it as if he'd been doing it for years. Now, I know he's, he's 23, he's not 18, 19. But nonetheless, in terms of actual first-team experience, it was one of his formative kind of seasons. And he just yeah. he played at a level for the majority of that season that was just superb. So yeah. the, the thought that potentially he could reach another level is scary, to be honest. Not for yeah. Celtic fans, but for <laughs> fans of every other club, I suppose. But Well, I said that... I wrote a newsletter piece and we were talking about the, the Ange Postacoglu effect. Yep. And I said that Scottish football felt a disturbance in the force uh, <laughs> last season. So, But now he's got his sights on Europe. And I I, I, I genuinely think, yeah, I, I read that comment there, the Ange effects in full flow, his influence of playing a huge part in getting the signs in. Players believe in him and it shows. I genuinely think that that's, and I use that phrase tooling up for Europe, that yep. now Europe, he wants to make his mark in Europe and, as you say, getting the business done early with more to come and get a settled side and to have a real tilt. We spoke last season, or at the end of last season, when Celtic had won the title, that they would want to go in as competitive as possible, Sean. These are the signs that they want to go in as competitive as possible in the greatest stage of all, isn't it? It is, and this is where I'm saying, like, um, you don't need to really look at how other people are doing, or if you're running yeah, your yeah. a certain goal in mind, and I agree with that, but you still logically, just it's wise sometimes to have a wee glance, and yeah. the way that Celtic are going about it this summer is in stark contrast um, to a lot of other clubs, and um, the reason for that, not only is because of the, the kind of added security of knowing you're in the group stages, but it's also who's now making those decisions, and who's pushing for those decisions to be made. Uh, yes. We've kind of touched on Michael Nicholson there. I do think he's been slightly overlooked. Um, obviously, Ange Postecoglou is the biggest driver of this. Dermot Desmond alluded to that himself when he said that he was essentially in charge of the football operation or the football department in that in that sense. But someone's got to sign off on it. Ange doesn't sign off in that sense. Yeah. And In that case, I, I, I do think you've got to mention Michael Nicholson and since he's taken over the reins. Now, you know I criticised the, the kind of silence from the club and not dealing with fans over the Bernard Higgins issue. I think that, that is still a valid criticism. But since that, I think Michael Nicholson's uh, performance has been exemplary in terms of recruitment, in terms of backing his post to Coggle to get the job done. The one thing I like about Michael Nicholson is he doesn't say much. It's actions. Yep. And I think every good CEO, somebody said, only speaks when they're announcing the figures and they're dealing with what what their job remit is. And as you say, if he's nodding and, and signing the checks and writing writing off the you know the deals and concluding the deals then that's what you want from your CEO. And if you've got a, a wonderful understanding with Ange Postercoglu that Ange takes care of the football side of matters and he will take care of the, the business side of that. I love that Sean. 
And I'll be only yeah, too happy yeah. to hear from him if and when the time was a time was right. If he continues to be silent and doesn't say much until he has to speak, then uh, but still continues the, to back AGMs him. really. AGMs, um, AGMs, AGMs yeah, 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 yeah. Really, but, but, um, but nonetheless, I do think it's worth worth mentioning no, no, I, 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 that kind of that kind of analogy of a boss that, that always says no. I think that's yeah. I think that's real. We've all we've all experienced that kind of that kind of thing. And I'm not saying that as a, a shot to anybody that used to be in charge. I'm just saying that yeah. a boss that clearly saying yes, yes, yes makes a world of a difference, especially with someone like Ange Postecoglou, who has a clear vision as to what he wants. We spoke about it before. It's just a new a new regime at Celtic, really, isn't it? From the football yeah. side to those running the club. And there seems to be a, loads of harmony there, Sean, which mm-hmm. has maybe not been prevalent in the past. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, uh, Tony, there's a comment here, and I take it this is about Michael Nixon. That that's true. He was part of the board, but he wasn't the CEO. That that's the problem. That that's yeah. the the point that I'm making. He's now actually in charge rather than being part of a a, a cog in the machine. If you know what I mean. Uh, but no, I, I do take your point, Albert. <laughs> Don't rain in the parade. Einstein. Don't <laughs> rain in the parade, Albert. Come on, <laughs> it's a happy day. It's joy. Now, I've, I should say, Pete mentioned he wasn't actually talking about Jota when he mentioned Harry Kuehl, he was talking about Mikey Johnston, uh, which is an interesting point, Tony. Does the Jota permanent signing have an, an impact on Mikey Johnston? Does he get that loan move that we've kind of been talking about, or is he kept in reserve as a, a backup? I I would uh, conjecture that Mikey Johnston might be heading for a loan move, mm. and I would, I would advocate for him to go on a loan move, to be yeah. fair, so... Yeah, William Lamont coming in there, big difference being CEO, of course. Yeah, that's my point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, uh, you know, some, I I just, I just feel that it's just all heading in the direction you hoped it would at the end of the season. mm -hmm. Isn't it, Sean? You didn't hope that the the celebration would come and then it would maybe grind to a halt over the summer. It's just been fantastic. I've never known so many Celtic supporters wanting the football to start to start tomorrow. I've never known so much excitement about where a manager and a potential group of players can go. Only those who were born in the, or can remember the when Jock Steen came in in 65 can maybe help us on that. I'll maybe ask my dad about that. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's just, it's it's such an exciting place to be. Celtic are a credi- credible and viable option for footballers that one change makes the mesmerising phone call. You've got a decision to make, haven't you? And most mm-hmm. of the decisions that have been made have been yes, have been an authority. Or as you, or as you put it yesterday, these are the droids he's looking for. <laughs> these, are the droids, <laughs> these are the droids he's looking for. And uh, but it's true, isn't it? I mean, I, I you yeah. know, we we joked about you no know, Jedi mind tricks and all that, but he's he clearly has a persuasive way about him, Sean, to be mm-hmm. able to sell the club to players and and get players to say, yep. I want to be part of this. Do you agree with this, Tony? Best close season ever. Uh, I suppose it depends what comes next for me, but of course, yeah. on the face of it, I think I, I would potentially agree. I think the was it the twenty ten one when you had Hooper and stuff coming in. I think that Hooper Ledley, all, all of those. I think that that's up there for me yeah. as well. But I suppose it all depends what happens after it, really. Of course, I, uh, I think well, it's it's been a, a fantastic window so far. Great close season. Hopefully, it gets better with another few additions, and as you say, maybe people leaving. But and then, and then it's all premised on what happens next. You know, if Celtic can retain their title and and make a fist of it in the Champions League and you know do well in Europe, then yeah, of course you'll you'll say it was all down to that. But we we did say that this close season would be pivotal in terms mm-hmm. of where Celtic headed and what direction they were headed in. So yeah, I mean it's but all the signs are there, Sean, that they're they're doing things mm-hmm. in, in the right manner. I mean, with with regards to Jota specifically, yeah, um, I mean, what other way to put it? See, the, the kind of form he found last term, that was the type of season when you look at his, his youth career and stuff, he was almost destined to have that, but it was meant to be for Benfica. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, because his youth pedigree and how highly he was thought of. I mean, when we'd done the, it was back when, when uh, Andy Bars was still with us, the two of us com- uh, um, kind of combined to do the scouting report on Jota. And it, it just totally shone through how highly he was rated, how good and how great a youth career he'd had, which doesn't always translate sure. to the senior team and hadn't translated to the, the senior side. 
But it was almost like if he was going to have a season like he had last year, it was meant to be for Benfica. So no wonder uh, like there was plenty of Benfica fans disappointed it wasn't for them. But yeah. uh, that's what to, to Celtic's eternal benefit now. He fell in love, Sean. He did, yeah, he did. His head was turned up. <laughs> My wife's been watching Love Island. That's a that's a, that's a term on that apparently. Yeah. <laughs> we'll not go there. Now another <laughs> another piece of news that did emerge yesterday, Sean, was Karamoko yep. Dembele eh, allegedly yep. signing for Stad Brest on Monday. Certainly, it looks as if he he's on his way, eh, and it throws up the. Eh, the kind of pathways, doesn't it? Uh, argument again about mm. how you can come through the, the system and maybe get into the system. But we've got a young work experience boy, Callum yeah. McCauley, who's written a wonderful piece today on the website. Uh, Sean will put the link up there. It's there. there right? And uh, it's doing it's doing very well. He's he's talking about that, isn't he? Can, going back to like the Quality Street Gang and, and yeah. the years in the 80s when Celtic had a production line of talent coming through. But he's now saying that and is now focused on that, that the B team will now form part moving forward, part of the plan moving forward is the B team. There will be players coming through and assimilated into the first team, which is the natural way of things really, or the way it should be, isn't it? That's the way you would ideally, yeah, that's the way you ideally see it happening. I'm going to, sorry, I just yeah. got distracted there for Andy's Go comment. My wife's been watching Love Island, that old chestnut. I swear, <laughs> I swear. It just happens to be on every night at nine o'clock when I'm in the I'm in the living room. But, yeah, you've got your thing uh, with the lingo. <laughs> it's crumbed and all that, you know what I mean? You'll, you'll, you'll be telling us you'll be going out to the fire pit in a minute. Back, you know I mean? Oh, look, there you go. Tony's let his mask slip there a wee bit. Um, I'm not right to, to talk about Dembele and also young Callum that we've got in work experience. You might see him next week. Depends. Depends how he does. Um, maybe subject him to, to everybody. But um, with, with Karamoko, uh, yeah, I was made aware last night that Stad Best um, were about to or ready to announce that he'd be joining. It was actually a fan site um, that, that I yeah. saw tweeting about it and then some reports in the French media. His contract will have expired yesterday, remember? Yes. Uh, it's a curious case. Dembele, but it's something we've spoken about a few times. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. in, in, in fact, as you, as you mentioned, Callum um, has written a feature which is free to read on the website. Actually, I should mention uh, discussing that youth path, uh, youth pathway, and he comes up obviously naturally. You can't really mention it nowadays without mentioning Karamoko, but I can't shake the feeling that that injury Tony against Bristol City last pre-season really took the wind out of his sails because yep. Post to Coglu specified working with him. Not long yep. after he was in, uh, after he was unveiled, and he yes. talked highly of him prior to that. Now, obviously, later on in the season when he was fit, it was mostly B team football, and then the contract situation just kind of put paid to that progress. Um, but on a related note, I mean, sorry, Tony, on you go. It was a shocker of a challenge as well. Um, yeah, aye. for, for a pre season friendly, and I, I did feel for Karen Moko Dembele, and you know, he, I think possibly it's maybe the best for him to go and try and get regular game time and kind of resurrect his career. But it is a shame. It might be a case of the one that got away in future years for Celtic. This Love hey. Island thing's not leaving me. <laughs> Sean's getting ready. I think it's just hot in here. I think, I think I've put the heating on there by accident. You, but... you brought it up. <laughs> no need to bring it up. <laughs> you know, so, uh, but no, uh, I, no, I think, I, Tony, as I see an overarching point or a, a, a related note, I'm always using the term overarching point because that's big, big picture thinking and all that, you know. <laughs> but on a related note, I think it would be really useful actually if Celtic took a leaf out of other clubs' books and, and just put out a list of released players at the end of every season. Yeah. I think um, some, this is another kind of reason for it. It would obviously help us knowing who's actually been released, who's been activated with another year deal, that kind of thing. But some, some of these guys, because it's mostly youth players and, and stuff, some will have been with the club for half their lives or thereabouts. So even a list kind of thanking them for their service, etc., yeah, I think yeah. wouldn't go amiss. Um, I don't know. It just seems a modern way to approach it rather than virtual silence at this time of, at this time of year with that kind of stuff. Yeah, definitely. I, I think uh, it would help everybody as well. It would help the supporters mm -hmm. too. And, and, and as you say, stop wild speculation about you know years being added on or guys being offered another year or that that kind of automatic release mm -hmm. or, or trigger. Yeah, because I mean you, you spoke to you spoke to Kerr McEnroy, yeah, who Kerr obviously McEnroy, is yeah. he's now yeah. at Kilmarnock, but he captained youth sides, he captained youth sides with Stephen Welsh and, and yeah. Henderson and stuff in it. He he was 
a highly rated youngster at Celtic, and he was there since he was 12, I want to say. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, he was there since he was 12, yeah. So, I mean, he does fit that mould. Obviously, he did find a club before this time where his contract would have expired, but he told you that they did hold an option for an extra year, which I think is quite common. Yeah. But it wouldn't necessarily have been made public that it had been extended or yeah, that it had been, let, it had been allowed it to go. In. It just, I just think it's a, it's a kind of modern way to do things. I think yeah. it, would, it would be useful for everybody concerned and it would give them a wee nod that they've been at the club for so long, that kind of guy. But but I, I do, I, I wish Karim and Belly all the best. I, I do feel that, you know, Celtic were maybe robbed of the chance to see him at his best because there's such high hopes for him. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I think that that injury he got pre-season last season was crucial, you know, and it was a real shame because he he, he would have played a he would have played a a, a better part, I think, a, a more uh, more important part this season because I think Ange was he was one of those guys who looked like he wanted to work with him and see him in action, and, and it's a yeah. real shame, you know. I and, think to to kind of put it into context, remember when he was thirteen and, and the kind of hype yeah. and all of that, but the under sixteen games or whatever it was, um, even disregarding that and just taking it as when, when he got to the level, got to the age where it kind of conceivably he could have been making a breakthrough into the the first team fold. Till now, when he's leaving, ten appearances, one goal, and one hundred and sixty three minutes in total, Tony, competitively. Yeah. It really isn't making any sort of mark, and there's no, obviously no. reasons behind the scenes, all of yeah, that yeah. stuff, injuries, selection, who's ahead of him, all of that stuff. Because got to remember when he was turning uh, the age where maybe he could have broke through, they were winning trebles left, right, and centre. It wouldn't yeah, have been yeah, that know, easy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh um, yeah, no, no. But, but nonetheless, those 163 competitive minutes, it's not, it's not great. Doesn't it make great reading. No, but he had the will of the Celtic fans. The Celtic fans willed him to. To be a you know a player for the club whenever he came on, they were right behind him. And yeah, Robert Gims is there, then Bailey will thrive in France. He needs a change of environment. He possibly does, but uh, and I hope he does. I don't yeah, I, 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 I hope he does too. because I hope it's, he does it's a similar thing. Here. Yeah. It's a similar thing with maybe Benfica fans and Jota to take us right back to the start. They yeah. won't they, there'll be a certain hurt about seeing him doing so well with someone yeah. that isn't Benfica, but they probably will because he was a youth product, actually like to see him doing well. He never like Dembele hasn't ditched Celtic, like when when they could cash in all that kind of stuff. It's not quite like that. Um, the contract was allowed to expire on both sides, if you know what yeah. I mean. So yeah. uh, I think most people will probably be be hoping he does well. I think I don't think that's a that's a controversial thing to say. No, I think so too. And John Boy, eighteen eighty eight, with me now that Jot has been found. Where's the browse <laughs> in midfield? And next piece of the jigsaw, he's getting greedy as well, Sean. Yeah. What I like to. We're allowed to get greedy, aren't we? Aye, of course, of course. <laughs> Especially, I mean, we, we've got our heads screwed on a wee bit um, just with the nature of the job, but fans, why not? Aye, I mean, <laughs> definitely. And another piece of business that I just saw a comment coming in there, Sean. Christopher Julian. Yeah, of course. What happens now with Christopher Julian? It's a big decision to be made, a big call with Julian now, isn't there? Because yeah, yeah. he's coming back, obviously mm-hmm. he didn't fail a medical, I think he broke down because of personal terms uh, they, they moved to uh, the German club Schalke Schalke, yeah, just up yeah, yeah uh, and so he, he's back, I mean there's still supposedly French clubs interested, Rennes mm-hmm. being one of them, And but it's Celtic have a decision now and a call to make, don't they? I think and, it's and I the think it's much, much the same call as what they had yeah. to make before the, the Schalke stuff. That just it might make it a wee bit harder. It's almost like see if you um, see if you try to sell a house and it gets to the latter stages and then falls through. People want to know why it fell through, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not necessarily going to rule out that you get to sell it eventually, just that people are going to want to know why it fell through. Was it on your part? Was it on their part? That kind of thing. And I think it's just something similar to that with, with Julian. The, the good thing is, from Celtic's point of view, is that there were other interested parties. Yes. Uh, whether they've been burned because um, <laughs> he decided that he wanted Schalke over them, I don't know. I'd like to think not. It's modern football. If they liked him before, they surely like him now. The the kind of curious thing was obviously the, the fact that his contract expires at the end of this what is now this season, yes. um, 2023. Um, but Celtic reportedly, I think it was a couple, a couple of reports, Derek Ray, Anthony Joseph, ones in Germany, uh, reporting that 
they were intending to trigger an extra year, which I don't know how many people knew that they had um, yeah. to trigger, um, which is in a similar way that uh, Tottenham did with Carter, Carter Vickers yeah, when Vickers, he came to Celtic, yeah. so that there would need to be a fee if Celtic wanted yes. him, that kind of thing, yeah. uh, which makes which makes business sense. Um, now, the, there's no suggestion that Celtic triggered that before he, like before the talks broke down, so as far as we're aware, it's just back to square one, isn't it? Yes, exactly, but it'll play out over the coming weeks. I don't know if Julian himself is agitating for a move because he sees the writing on the wall and mm. wants more first-team football elsewhere, which with Carter Vickers and Starfelt in situ, he might not get a diet of regular first-team football at Celtic. Mm-hmm. But I still think, and I agree with you, that we still need another central defender to come in. Yes, um, at least one. Uh, at least one. And, mm-hmm. a, and a defensive midfielder. That's, that's, uh-huh. that's our hopes now, Sean. I wouldn't but, mind another striker either, to be honest with you. Um, but we'll you're see. Down. We'll see. You're good. It's, yes. uh, it's my turn to agree. Um, Open brackets, Jordan Larson. I was going to say, as long as, as, long as the initials are JL. <laughs> well, it's, no, the, it's, initials, it's, it's, the initials today are JD Jota Day. It's been a wonderful start to the Friday, Sean. Uh, we enjoyed this bulletin. It's always good when Celtic sign players. I told you. She sang players every day. Pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> and we thank you guys for the comments coming in. Uh, you're clearly as happy as Sean and myself on the bulletin. It's uh, it's been a good news week for Celtic. Tremendous. Long may it continue. Sean, nice positive always, day, Tony. I love a nice man. positive day. What's that? I love a nice positive day. It's good. <laughs> yeah. And I'll just direct you to the bottom of the screen. We've got a new deal for you. Three pounds for three months. Uh, join us on the Celtic Way, www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe and get downloading the One Football app. I'll leave Sean to go and watch the Omnibus of Love Island. <laughs> I've been up all week. <laughs> I want to say again, first class contribution, Sean, it always is. Uh, tremendous. And uh, have a wonderful Friday, guys. It really can't get any better. Or can it? <laughs> we'll see. It was an earlier announcement. Are we going for a half six Friday announcement again, Sean? With somebody I'm, on, else? I'm, I'm taking my daughter away to do for the day. You're on your own with that one. <laughs> um, I'm on my, I'm on my yeah. own with that one. Thanks very much. Thanks <laughs> for your comments, guys. Tremendous. Cheers, Tony. We'll Cheers, guys. On Monday. <laughs>